right here I have my 2004 Crown Victoria that is battered and bruised. I hope your car doesn't look like this. The coolest part of this car is the instrument cluster that I use from a V6 Mustang GT. Well, what I can do for you guys is I can get you really close on the wiring on how to do this in your Crown Victoria. Before we even start, let me show you that it does work. All of these gauges, now this right here is supposed to be the seat belt. That's what I think, that's what it is. Now that all the turn signals work, all that high beam and everything, and even if you look in the corner right here by that, you can see that the light comes on. All right, so it, it's all good. Now also too, we got the tachometer to work. All right, you definitely know how to do that, right? That's a whole separate entity. And you're gonna need that autometer box 9117 and then you have to wire it up into that little harness right there. There's a lot of write-ups on it. Definitely gonna need that right there. Before you start, unplug your negative on your battery. Now this one here was a V6 cluster. Now what I did was I drilled a hole up top right there and there's a little um, thing you could put it like a flathead screwdriver in there, a real tiny one. I think you have to move it all the way to the right. You change the motherboard, find one of these. You take the V6 one out, and you get a V8 one and you put it all in. It's really simple to put it in, it's not hard. Boom, you have a V8 situation. This is a little bit off the tack, but it's still doable, it's not that bad. Have your position right there. It's going to be uh, white and blue, and you skip a space. Then the next one will be black and yellow. The other one will be violet and white. The other one looks like it's all green, black, this one here is going to be the tack, right after the black one, that's gonna be your tack. And then this one here looks like a ground. This is for the Crown Vic ground, it's pink and orange. Next one is red and yellow, that's um, the Crown Vic power, and start and run. Next one after that, seems like it's all orange, but it's orange and black. This one looks like it's green and yellow stripe, and then we have another power wire, which is red and yellow. Then another black wire, and this one here seems to be white and red, and another ground wire, which is pink and orange. Now note, on the power wire, we got one wire coming in. What I made was, you know, two connectors going on right into this, and this completes this one. Now mind you, you guys gotta check your diagram. Double check, triple check. I'm just giving you a heads up on how to get it done faster, but it's for you to go into it technically to make sure your wiring in your car is proper and it goes into the right spaces and it all depends on the cluster and everything like that. Now if we move on to the black one, right? All right, plug is on this side. Now, again, we got power wires again, which is red and yellow. The next one after that is a pink and orange. Now this one here looks like a red and white stripe. This one here is a yellow in white stripe, the next one after that is black, then we have another power wire which is red and yellow. And this one right here seems to be all yellow, and then the next one after that looks like a pink and, and, and green stripe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the next one after that is a yellow and green stripe, the other one after that is black and white, the other one looks like another ground wire, which is all pink and orange. This one is gray and black. The next one is blue and red. The other one is green and black. Now, this one is the extension wire. This one you have to lengthen. You gotta do it like that. If you look all the way at the other end over here, you see that you have the green and you have to lengthen that one. And also, the other one that you have to lengthen will be this one which is um, the red and white wire. You gotta put a little extension on it because you gotta go all the way over here with it, all right? And then the last wire on this one here is going to be green and white. So now for this one, I didn't really give you the detail detail, but I gave you basically um, the color codes on how to line it up. Now it's up to you to do your due diligence. Make sure that these things are wired up properly. You can screenshot it if you like, and this should help you. Now we're gonna put it all back together and see what is up. 
So let's slide this back in here like so. Oh, no, 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 goes in like so, like that. And you go behind here and then you start plugging the other stuff up. Get the black one first. That one. And the white one over here. And then that's really it. I mean, you can try to fit it the way you want it. It's going to differ from car to car, but you know, this is how I did it. Cut out a little notch here, did it like here. You see that it's off just by a little bit. You can, you know, make something and hold it in right there. Hold this right here, and I made this little notch right there. So now, come out here. See if I can get this ground yep see that stuff works up okay. there everything works oil pressure all that stuff gas gauge well the car is cold so you know you can see that the gauges do work blinkers hi uh, well you know the lights do work I just you know you need to plug that up but um you got basically what's going on now the reason why it's dinging like that because the door is open and also the light is not plugged in so I gotta come back out here and undo that so yeah on top of it the reason why I'm not gonna put the cluster back in I'm actually going to be doing some uh, research on how to swap this engine out take this out there was a guy on Facebook forgot his name I'm gonna tag him in the video uh, he wanted to know how to make a Crown Vic faster without LS swapping the car I'm glad he said that because I'm going to swap the engine out of this thing what engine I don't know but I'm going to do it just because he said how to make the crown fit faster. So that's what we're going to do. So the cluster is in. Everything is in. Everything is good, man. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Build Something TV, man. Hope you guys were enlightened. Just thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for checking out the videos in entirety. If you have any questions about the wiring diagram, bro, you need to have two wire diagrams. One for your car and one for the cluster that you got from the Mustang, the Pacific Year. If it's a Cobra one, if it's a V6 one, or is it just a regular one from the GT? Can't be the square plugs, gotta be the rectangle joints, two of them. But this car is ready for an engine swap. What engine swap? I have no clue. I keep flip flopping a lot. I ain't lying to you. Cause you know, you want something that's just dope and tasty. Now would it be a LS? Well, how can you make the Crown Vic faster without using the LS. There's a lot of things you can do. You got to be creative, bro. Got to be creative. And you want to know how fast you want to go? We'll speak about that on the next video. Even though so many people with YouTube shorts and YouTube channels talk about this Crown Victoria swap. It's just all on preference, man, really. I'm going to get into the details on some options. On the next couple of videos, man, hopefully I can get the exhaust onto this thing because that's why it's still up in the air. I mean, I have a YouTube short that's out there that is really talking about all of this what i just did and um i'll leave that right after this video here man so we'll see you guys on the next one man before we installed the shock we installed the lowering spring it is this number right here cc501 move get that now after that you know you're dealing with a little bit of space right there to install the shock you start cutting i mean you can use some other kind of circular cutting tool but i'm using this and i got me this angle thing with this right here and you make the hold make sure you use the stock situation from the crown victoria on the bottom end of the shock and you get this all situated ready to go have it like that you have your shock and it's all the way up in there and see you can actually pull it down like this and then you let the shock come in and that's how you're going to sneak this situation right on in there got a little bit of uh, thread on it so you can put a bolt on it you're going to need a shallow end socket put a little tape on it so it can hold inside there and have it like this 
You have to put the deep socket on it and you tighten up the bottom bolt right there and that completes your shock and spring install on your Crown Victoria.